Welcome to the Engineering Update. I'm Casey Panetta, Managing Editor of ECN, and in this week's episode, a portable artificial kidney, drones and sports photography, and robots flying airplanes. Once someone loses between 85 and 90% of kidney function, generally they need to turn to dialysis to take over some of the normal functions of the kidney. This includes things like removing waste, salt, and extra water, and managing the amount of potassium, sodium, and bicarbonate in your blood. Though there are two types of dialysis, both must be done either in a hospital setting, dialysis unit, or at home. And depending on the severity of the condition, this can be a lifelong treatment plan unless a new kidney is found. Because this can mean being attached to a non-mobile machine for three times a week for up to four hours at a time, the wearable artificial kidney could offer a more normal lifestyle to those dealing with kidney failure. The 10-pound unit looks more like a tool belt than a medical device, but functions in much the same way as a conventional machine, which may be as big as a filing cabinet. The designer is led by Victor Gura at Cedar sinai Medical Center in LA and the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA, utilizes the recent trend toward miniaturization in batteries and materials, and also found a way to reduce the necessary water from 40 gallons to a pint. The wearable device actually debuted in 2009, but was just recently selected for human testing by the FDA. The trial will use 10 full-time volunteers and 24-hour cycles to test the equipment, which has had limited trials in Italy and the UK. Future plans include an even smaller device and the development of a device that would mimic the natural rhythm of a kidney instead of several hours of usage per week. For around 50 years, the dramatic shot from a blimp floating high overhead has delivered a clear message to TV viewers. You're about to watch a major sporting event. The next generation of photographers can use drones in this same capacity, with even better shots and clarity from up above. The idea of a drone flying overhead may seem like an expensive technique, but that is actually just the opposite. Draw-dropping photography from drones has actually never been cheaper or easier. Prices for the actual quadcopter that's small enough to fit into a backpack started around $1,000 and they're even equipped with a high-definition camera. At a recent safety event in Austin, Texas, UAV Direct's technology manager, Eric Davis, showed off the DJI Phantom 2. He calls it the iPhone of drones because of its sleek looks and simple controls. Davis showed off the controls and the drone went airborne, zipping through the Texas sky, stopping to hover over the football stadium in the distance before bringing it in for a landing. It was described as being thrilling and it suddenly became clear as to why this is the future of sports photography. But sadly, it looks like we won't be seeing this technology out in the field, no pun intended, for at least a few more years. Drone enthusiasts are waiting for the FAA to come up with rules and standards to govern UAV as directed by Congress. But a recent government audit states that the agency is behind schedule and will miss its September 2015 deadline. Researchers at Kais University in South Korea have created a robot capable of navigating its way through a flight simulator. And yes, that does mean what you think it does. The era of autonomous commercial pilots might be upon us sooner than you might think. The artificial creation is known as a PiBot, or a pilot plus a robot, and it's capable of operating a scaled-down aircraft simulator. In the demo, it assumes the controls of a faux Piper Comanche, operating the throttle, battery, altimeter, avionics, fuel pump, and various switches and knobs necessary for the single-engine, four-seated craft to successfully fly. During flight, it monitors the roll, pitch, yaw, airspeed, and GPS location, and is able to take off and land without incident. And while it definitely needs some work, the little PiBot does satisfy the requirements specified in the FAA Flying Handbook. Which could mean that, yes, we could see robotic pilots in the near future. And while the notion of entrusting hundreds of lives and millions of dollars to a robot might seem terrifying, it's important to remember that robots, with no free will to speak of, can make mistakes. Meaning that they could eliminate the very concept of pilot error and the associated crashes and tragic loss of life. And considering that we already have a multitude of unmanned aerial vehicles, it's only a matter of time before robots man the cockpits of commercial aircraft. That's all for this week's video. Be sure to check in on Twitter and Facebook and view past episodes at ECNMag.com. For the ECN channel, I'm Casey Panetta, and this has been your engineering update.